and welcome back to another episode of Unravel by Unihog. I'm Rohan. Uh, I work as a designer at Unihog, and today we have with us Arisha. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Arisha Vellani. I am the director of admissions at Unihog, and I am so happy to be here today. Yeah. So let's just jump right into the topics. Yeah. So one of the biggest discussions that we have today, at least for people of my age group, are the whole masters and uh, you know everything yeah. that's involved with it right. so a post graduation degree like how important do you think a post graduation degree is or a masters degree is I think it just keeps getting uh, more important and it makes you more efficient to work in a field, especially if we're looking at a niche field. So for example, there's not really a master's needed for every single field, but the more information you get, the higher up you can get in terms of the process of interviewing, the higher you can get in terms of a job title right when you enter the company. So I definitely do think the extra knowledge never hurts. Um, it just depends on if it's worth it for the individual. Master's programs are very expensive, so I think that's definitely a big topic of conversation that comes along because undergraduate seems like a necessary requirement these days to get a job but for masters it's usually an optional you know uh, topic of conversation um, so I understand the uh, frustration or the debate between should we go for the master's program or not um, I guess it depends on the individual that's like my mm -hmm. easiest answer if you feel like it is worth it for you to go to that program feel like it is um, because again because of like the budget constraints that yeah. the masters comes with uh, but yeah it never hurts to gain more knowledge and I say the same with PhD PhD yeah. is a longer rich that's like further than masters but yeah. because what you're doing is gaining knowledge not for two years but rather for five years and yeah. within that creating knowledge PhD programs are wonderful too yeah. so I guess we can t maybe go deeper into different fields and the opportunities that come after that yeah so you're basically trying to say that it's all about, I mean, it definitely does add value. Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. And it also depends on the kind of course that you want to do, the program. Absolutely. So, I mean, how, okay, let's say, for example, I want to go for master's now. Yeah. And uh, how can you break down the whole process of choosing the right university and the right program? I think the right program is the better uh, choice to fixate on. Mm -hmm. So rather than picking the right university, because, you know, when we go for undergraduate studies, we're all like top 20 rankings and yeah. we're looking for those rankings. And in master's programs, those top rankings won't always fit the program you want to yeah. do. When we go into masters, it makes more sense to do something niche. So for example, I studied general psychology for my undergraduate, where for my postgraduate, I would be um, going into something specific in like, for example, counseling. Yeah. So if you go in for your masters, rather than doing something general, fixate on a program that interests you a lot, yeah. and then go to the school that offers that program. When it's an MBA, it's a little bit diff uh, different yeah. because MBA programs obviously are ranked. So again, there you can look at the rankings. But like I said, because each field is so different, not every course is offered at every school. Yeah. We need to look at the course, what it offers. The curriculum is all online. So they're, they're not hiding anything from you. Mm -hmm. You just check the curriculum, see if it's something that you're interested in, and then you decide to apply there. Of course, okay. we don't want to go to a school that's not ranked at all. We mm -hmm. want to make sure it's accredited and um, it can offer us the resources that we're looking for. Yeah. But it definitely matters more about the course than about the school. Okay, so what yeah. are some of the factors that you think you know, you should keep in mind while choosing a program. Yeah, so when choosing a program, I do still wanna say location is important. Location so of fine. course, if you're gonna do a master's for a year or two, yeah. you don't wanna go to a really cold place if you're a <laughs> Dubai kid, you know? And uh, you wanna make sure because it's not like undergraduate studies where in undergrad, there's like 15 million opportunities for yeah. us to like make friends and hang out yeah. with school organizations. Master's is a little bit more focused. Yeah. It's a little bit more specific exactly, and you're doing yeah. two years on what you love. Yeah, Hopefully. I mean, I feel like it's the life is way different from your undergrad. It life. is. I guess you're more adult. In yeah, that this, way. this is too much of coursework to you know exactly. focus on. It's not like you can have a lot of fun as well. Exactly, yeah. and it's kind. Of, you do this by choice. So again, yeah. with college, like obviously we were going to college. Like that's how my parents kind of put it for me. Yeah. Like there is no choice in terms of going to undergrad. So mm -hmm. it was always put in for me that that is the next path. But for graduate school, that's fully my doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's me doing the research. It's me doing the applications. Um, it's me picking the courses. And yeah. you know, everyone is just kind of in the back end cheering yeah. on hopefully. <laughs> but all of these things are chosen. So I do think this makes it different. Um, you are a little bit more inclined to having to push yourself. You have to push yourself throughout the whole program. So yeah. I would say pick a place that helps you push yourself. Um, pick a place with an environment that helps you thrive and empowers you. Uh, pick a course where all the subjects are really fun, yeah. or really enthusiastic, really exciting for you. Because here, if you are not pushing yourself and motivating yourself, there may not be a hundred person squad or team or you know 16,000 people like an undergrad class mm. that, that keep pushing you to do more. 
plus. Yeah. Uh, there's also one thing I want to touch upon. I want to know your perspective on this because a lot of people out there struggle with this. Yeah. For someone who is uh, just graduated, mm-hmm. he's just finished his undergrad. Now say um, the whole dilemma of you know, do I work for a while and then yes. go do my masters, or yes. do I do masters right away so I, you know I can just finish off all my degrees together? Absolutely. What do you suggest? So again, the conversation. So I have the same dilemma. So the conversation mm-hmm. goes a couple of different ways. The first thing is if we have the enough, if we have the right budget to be able to go to master straight okay. away, right? Finance. So after exactly, finance is really important in yeah. this case because we can't, you know, un- underscore like neglect the fact that after paying however much you paid for undergraduate studies, you're gonna go straight into master's now. Yeah. Master's is not cheap. If anything, it could be more expensive because it's such a niche program. Yeah. And everything is condensed into two, one or two years, right? Mm-hmm. So that would be the first part. Is it financially, oh, is that a financial like option available yeah, for you, yeah. right? Yeah. That's uh, the first part. The second part is some fields don't want you to go straight into the master's program. Mm-hmm. So I had applied, or I was looking to apply to Cornell right after I graduated. Okay. And I emailed them and I, you know, said, hey, I really am interested in your program. I want to become a therapist. I'm so Mm. excited to apply. I sent them my resume. And this was before the application. I just like told them, hey, I'm interested in you guys. Mm. By the way, it's really good to just, you know, always keep in contact with the school (laughs) just for them to know you before they read your application. So definitely something to keep in mind. But when I sent my resume to them, they responded by saying, we absolutely love your application. Like we Mm -hmm. really like your profile. You got really good grades in undergrad. You're so involved. But the thing is, we want all of our applicants to have at least three years of experience. Oh, so they told the me that straight away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me that straight away. And mm-hmm. it wasn't on their website, but they said for you to have a more likely chance to get in, get in to yeah. a counseling program, we want you to have experience in the world, right? Yeah. Being a mentor to other people yeah. in whatever field that may be. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So and the same thing applies to an MBA as well, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. MBA, they need experience. experience I yeah. I haven't seen many people get into an MBA right after college. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there are some I this is what I know cuz uh, some of the universities they also you know, you can apply with directly off to your uh, undergrad Absolutely. for an MBA. Absolutely. But I don't know how much value that's generally going to add to your uh, it could career and stuff. Yeah. I just feel like um, some schools do that. It's quite rare. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's definitely not an easy automatic yeah. acceptance. Yeah. Uh, and also the more experience you get, I feel like you can actually like understand and absorb hmm. the information you're learning in your program because yeah. it's one of those uh, it's one of the situations where in undergrad you learn and then you apply yeah. but now you get to apply within your learning exactly, and it's, yeah. it's really fun because it goes yeah. hand in hand so but like yeah. when you look at it from a career perspective yeah. uh, most corporates let's say they're not going to hire you right okay so for example you did your undergrad and then you go ahead and do your MBA right after yeah. that they're not going to hire you for a management position, right? Because you don't you have experience. the experience. Yeah. Exactly. So then I still feel like it's better if you work, if it's an MBA strictly, right. it's better if you work and then you go and do an MBA. Yeah. I feel like that's Again, I feel like so many jobs. Similar with your counseling of, thing. Yeah. Absolutely. I think a lot of jobs do come out of networking, yeah. you know, around the world. So sure. I don't want to say like, yes, you have to have experience and then yeah. go to your MBA or yeah. vice versa. Sometimes they'll take you with no experience. Sometimes yeah. they'll say, what a cool kid. He did his undergrad and his MBA so mm. quickly and finished it off. Yeah. He's a genius, right? Yeah. So it really depends on the school or it depends on the organization. It depends yeah. on the person, who he is or who she is. But experience is so helpful. Experience and if you look at the job criteria for so many jobs online, you'll see it says like needs seven years of experience seven years, yeah. and an MBA. Like yeah. the experience comes first always for some yeah, reason yeah. of those uh, criteria. So mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't hurt, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But <laughs> yeah, again, it depends sense. on the individual. Of course, yeah. yeah. So now let's say, look, let's stick strictly to the US sure. okay let's talk about masters in the US sure. um what is the can you run can you run me through the application process yeah, for absolutely. the whole thing absolutely yeah. so i actually applied for mine too yeah. um and the application process is really straightforward so what they're looking at mostly is going to be your university grades from undergraduate okay uh so you know if you got like a 1600 and yeah. SAT in high school they don't really care as much mm-hmm. um, but it's the impact you made throughout university yeah. so that's really important because you know knowing that you succeeded throughout uni and you were able to impact your community and just be a positive change and positive energy at that university is really helpful on top of that I think that thing that helped my application thrive the most was my work experience after okay. I've been in the education field now for three years and being able to support students and mentor these students directly goes into the counseling realm Okay. So it's really helpful for you to have experience that has to do with what you want to do. In so your CV basically. 
it's your CV, but you write it in a very beautiful story. Okay. So for the U.S., um, if anyone's applied to the U.S. before, they know how creative that process is. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about your personal growth. You have to talk about challenges. You have to talk about your narrative in a unique manner. So yeah. for me, I want to do counseling to help people feel belonging mm -hmm. because I'm an immigrant child. I've moved around a lot. So yeah. my lack of belonging was yeah. the reason I want to help others. So that was my narrative. Yeah. That makes it's sense. all about telling a story. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about telling yeah. a story. But again, they want to see a very authentic authentic story. It course, just has yeah. to be you. Yeah. And sometimes these stories evolve through your experiences. Mm. So for me, Baylor helped me a lot, which is my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. My work has helped me so much. And mm -hmm. those two combined together have allowed me to take my energy and my impact from organizations at uni to an actual platform, like an organization like mm -hmm. UniHawk. Yeah. So it's been such a great journey as uh, I graduated, I worked and in the middle, I had even worked at like a law firm and mm -hmm. you would think oh. that's not relevant at all, <laughs> yeah. but even interacting with clientele there, even mm -hmm. interacting with the team there, everything goes in towards what you want to do. Uh -huh. So every experience is relevant. I would say don't, you know, feel like right after uni, you have to go towards, like, I, I couldn't go become a therapist. It's yeah, not possible. Yeah. So then I did my, the, the closest thing I could find, which was mm -hmm. education. And I yeah. feel like I've been able to make that impact there. Of course. So for an MBA, yeah. yes, you. it is hard to, you know, right now, I guess, just like get a job right after university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but you just want to make sure that the experience you have it somehow adds value for you to become a businessman later. Of course, yeah. Like it's, so it's you, your story. Yeah, so you spoke about uh, being in the right financial state yeah. uh, to apply for master's. So keeping that into consideration, let's talk a little bit about uh, the scholarship opportunities Absolutely. as such. Yeah. yeah, I would say that um, grad school is a little bit more kind and lenient when it um, comes to you having to figure out the financial situation. So mm -hmm. if you were to an undergrad get a 40% scholarship for mm -hmm. your tuition, in undergrad, if you email them back and say, hey, give me 50, they might not even respond to you. Um, but for graduate school, they're actually really kind about working with you to potentially gain a higher scholarship, knowing your needs, because it's such a small batch that's entering. Yeah. Not everyone is applying for your program. In yeah. undergraduate, we're applying to a school. Yeah. For grad school, you're applying to a program within hmm. the school. So your competition becomes a little bit less and the spots become less, obviously, because maybe they only let 20 kids into the program. Yeah. So if you're one of the 20 rather than being one of the 16,000, yeah. it's just so helpful because they really do care about you. Yeah. So they do give you scholarships. For international students, they usually will just give you scholarships on, off the bat, like they'll just uh -huh. give it to you just like it's like a gift, uh -huh. just like undergrad is. Uh, that's what happened with me. They just okay. kind of told me that I got it, which was really so cool. So it's like a guarantee that most students, it's most not, international students will get it? No, no, no. I'm just saying that there's not really always an additional process. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh -huh. So if they give it to you, they'll give it to you kind of with your acceptance hand in uh -huh. hand. Uh -huh. But again, if it's not enough, if something else needs to be there, you can always contact the school and try to work with them on it Yeah. Uh, just to see if there is anything else they could do uh -huh. just to like make that happen. And what about like student loans and stuff like that? Student loans is a bit difficult because you would have to take the loans from your own country or from your resident country. Uh -huh. Taking a student loan in America wouldn't really be possible when it's like from the government but yeah. it could be through private mm -hmm. um, you know firms organizations mm -hmm. but again the payback rate could be higher like the interest rate with yeah. it so it's not that advisable exactly I wouldn't yeah. advise it which is because um, yeah. I've heard scary stories of people not being Absolutely. able to pay their student Absolutely. loans back yeah. and you never know the caveats that come with these yeah. loans uh, being non-American over there is just a little it, it's yeah. a lot of pressure and um, if you don't know the finance or if you don't know I guess the law Mm -hmm. in terms of like every single detail you just don't want to get into a place where you're in trouble yeah yeah and like what about the cultural you know adjustments that you got to make yeah. as a student like for example your homesickness and you know you're going Absolutely. to a new city maybe you're not stayed away from home and stuff like Absolutely. that the, the diverse number of students totally. you know like how was it for you like yeah um for me i haven't been to grad school yet so um, i will let you know once yeah. i go in oh, the future yeah. well, i mean you studied in the u.s yes right? i studied undergrad. for undergrad yeah. so it's definitely different but i also used to live in the u.s like for 10 oh, okay. years before oh yeah um so i was like half dubai half u.s <laughs> kid um yeah. and so that was i think that helped a lot mm. um but it is definitely different it's so different than yeah. Dubai. it's so different <laughs> than our home countries yeah. and it's definitely an adjustment but i would say you just have to find the right people that's right not people. to say that every single person who's different than you won't be your best friend mm -hmm. it just means that you have to find the differences that work well with you yeah. that mesh well with you um in undergraduate studies though i had 
a million platforms to be able to make different friends. Yeah. So whether that was a South Asian organization, whether that was a sorority, whether yeah. that was my psychology fraternity, I had mm -hmm. so many different outlets of friendship. Even my dorm, I met my best friends in my dorm, yeah. which was amazing. But obviously in graduate school, all of those things aren't available to you or they're available more for the undergrad. So if you go, it's a little like you're the older person there, mm -hmm. you know, these mm -hmm. clubs and organizations. Yeah. So I will say, I don't think graduate school will be as easy socially, no. but again, it's your self-motivation. It's your drive mm -hmm. that needs to make you maybe go into the city and yeah. find a group of people that resonate yeah. with what you like to do. Yeah. Um, some of my friends really love like rock climbing, so they get into <laughs> clubs like that, uh -huh. even outside of their school that helps them mesh with people. So yeah. I don't think it's easy at all <laughs> in yeah. any way, but you have to find your people and you have to give it time. I think that's yeah. the most important Somebody find thing. the right people always. Absolutely, but that yeah. could happen in a year. It could happen yeah. in a year and a half. It could happen at your job. Yeah. I worked a lot of on-campus jobs where I made mm -hmm. friends too, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's just like so many hubs for you to meet people. I would just say, even if it's tiring, even if you're so tired of telling people I'm from India and that I come to Dubai and like you have to say the whole spiel over and yeah. over again for me I had to too it's like I was like a Texas kid but a Pakistani mm -hmm. kid and a yeah, kid. It's, yeah. it's a long speech you have to give <laughs> but um it gets you connected with people uh -huh. and one person will be the right person yeah you, I mean you'll end up finding the right person exactly, at the end. yeah exactly. uh okay now let's just break this down a little more further okay now yeah. for example I work in marketing yeah. now as a student if I want to apply for a, a master's in marketing, mm -hmm. say marketing management or something, how as a, as a counselor, how would you advise me? Like the route to take? Absolutely. So firstly, I would help you understand what country you want to go to because that's yeah. like step one. Let's Maybe. talk about US. Okay. So Let's if we're talking US. about the US, we're yeah. going to look at the program, the, the schools that offer this program. Yeah. So marketing management usually is offered at pretty much every school. Yeah. Um, so what you would have to do is just understand. Then we can bring rankings into it. We can bring mm. states into it and we can figure yeah, out yeah. what are your priorities. Like preferences, yeah. Exactly. Some kids literally say, I want to be in California. I won't go anywhere else. Yeah. That makes it simple, <laughs> yeah. right? And for me, I wanted to go back to Texas. That was okay. my forte. So uh -huh. for me, like Baylor was a pretty yeah. comfortable choice, you know? So mm -hmm. if you have a clean palate and don't know you where did, you You did your undergrad in the same uni, right? Uh, I did undergrad at Baylor University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... I guess it just depends on like what your priorities are. Priorities if are, you yeah. want to be in a maybe not so cold weather, which is so helpful, you know, because seasonal yeah. depression is very yeah. much a thing. <laughs> so we just want to make sure you're in a place. If uh, For me, I wanted to be around some kind of family. And mm. so Texas had family. Yeah. So that was also something that had to do with it. So I would say per figure out your personal priorities. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're putting in so much money and going to a place, you want to make sure you're happy there. Mm -hmm. So... I would say yes, depend on the rankings, 50%, but then the other 50% has to be your personal drive to want to go to that place. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for me, I had applied to New York and Boston yeah. and those two places offer me very similar environments. Mm. Um, and it was just about choosing where do you want to end up? What yeah. program is right for you? You can also apply to multiple programs <laughs> and kind of pick at the end. Yeah. Um, so that was like really interesting too for me to like navigate through. Yeah, but don't you think that the whole, uh, the location aspect of it is a little... Uh, conflicting because now for example say you got you don't want to go to a colder right. place okay but then you get into like a really good program yeah. the program that you want but it's in a place that doesn't favor your you know um, yeah. needs in terms of climate and stuff like absolutely. that maybe you don't even have relatives there absolutely but this, since the program is so good you might just end up going there right absolutely so for me same thing i yeah. hate the cold oh my gosh i cannot take it like i'm like yeah. puckering up in london all the time so it's like <laughs> it's not fun but i want to say that like if you end up applying to that program that is super far away in that really cold place yeah. If the cold was a factor that really like pushed you away from there, you wouldn't have. Applied. You wouldn't have gone there in yeah. the first place. Yeah. You wouldn't have applied. Exactly. Like if yeah. there is a zero chance of yeah. you going there, like for me, I don't really want to end up in. Let's say I don't know. I didn't want to apply to Canada, uh -huh. right? I didn't apply. Even oh. if I got into the top uni there, I just feel comfortable because I did my undergrad in the U.S. I would yeah. feel comfortable going to the U.S. Yeah. But that's because there's zero chance for me to be able to go to Canada right now. I wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. And again, everyone's personal preference. Some say that about the U.S. Some yeah. say that about the U.K. Some people just want to go to Netherlands. Yeah. So again, like figuring out the country is probably number one. Mm -hmm. And then two, figuring out the things that matter to you mm -hmm. versus the rankings. And if the rankings top what matters to you, then of yeah. course, like then it won't matter. Yeah. So the first step is finding out your priorities. Absolutely. Setting your priorities straight. Absolutely. And Location, program, then. everything. Okay. Exactly. What is the next step for my application? You're going to apply. So mm -hmm. I would say before you start your application, even if you're interested in doing a master's, reach yeah. out to the schools that are on your radar. Mm -hmm. So I ended up applying only to four or five schools, yeah. but I reached out actually to at least more than 10 just to say, hey, like I'm going to be applying. I didn't even end up applying half the time. Yeah. But just get them in your system. Like, or yeah. sorry, get yourself in their system. Mm -hmm. You want to, 
make sure that they just know you that when they see your application they put you in the like I don't know in their yeah, platform yeah, yeah. you're already there because you yeah. already sent them an email and also seeing the CV when mm -hmm. they see it again with your application they're like oh I know that kid like uh -huh. they emailed me two, three months yeah, ago yeah, yeah. also they give advice a lot which is really fun uh -huh. um, so for Cornell they had told me like hey we loved your application but we need some years of experience mm -hmm. that pushed me honestly to start working oh, which was okay. really good um, so I think it's like that's a really big part of it mm -hmm. just talk to the schools first sometimes you can set up a Zoom meeting so mm -hmm. I had met so many schools before applying <laughs> I would just meet them and um, the school that I really liked the most that I actually got into I had a 30 minute minute meeting with the director of the department mm -hmm. of counseling uh, the 30 minute meeting went on to an hour and a half Ooh. we were talking and talking and he was so kind and he, he made me love the school so Baylor did the same thing actually uh -huh. I was not really interested in going because mm -hmm. it's more medicine direct related yeah, yeah. at least that's what I thought it was I already lived in Texas so I'm gonna <laughs> go somewhere else but because the academic advisor supported me so much and wanted me to go to the school, it's like a it's like an interchangeable like you know yeah. persuasion. I guess you're persuading them, but they're persuading you too. But, so I think uh, yeah. the energy that they give to you is amazing. And then after that, you actually start the process. So you just click apply. You look at the requirements. Mm -hmm. You submit all the needed documents, which would be your college transcript. Yeah. You have to have teacher and other recommendation letters, Otherwise, yeah. which is something we can talk about. And yeah. then also a personal statement, a mm -hmm. statement of purpose. Yeah. Uh, why do you want to do the program? Or yeah. how could you, you know, uh, how could you be an impact to this program? So they could ask different questions, uh -huh. and then it's just your personal data, and then you're good. There's really not much to it. Yeah. There are interviews sometimes, um, but with that, obviously, they'll tell you after. Like, if your application gets to a point of the interview, hmm. uh, out of five or six applications, I only got one interview, which is very normal. Yeah. The, the schools that admitted me at the end didn't even interview me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. And what about like standardized tests? So I did take the GRE, mm -hmm. um, but the schools that I really wanted to go to, I didn't submit it. It's a oh. lot of them are test optional. Yeah, yeah it's optional yeah. for most colleges. Exactly. Yeah. For MBA, but no, for example, if you, uh, no, sorry to cut you off. Uh, like for example, if uh, so for a student whose grades are not that great in their undergrad, I think doing a GRE or a GMAT or whatever, you know, I feel like it, and getting a good score on that would definitely be a booster for them. Yeah. Because so that's the only route that they can take. Absolutely. So yeah. some schools don't really need it. So yeah. a lot of schools are test optional from COVID. Yeah. Um, some schools require it. So yeah. if they're requiring it, you have to take it. If you don't have really good grades, or even if you do have good grades and you're good at those standardized tests, take yeah. it. Like definitely, I would say take the test even if you don't need to, mm -hmm. just to see what you get at the end. For me, I'm not very good at standardized tests, so I didn't get a bad <laughs> grade, but I definitely know that my GPA was way higher. Way better than that, yeah. Exactly, so I went test optional for a couple of schools. Some yeah. schools I sent the uh, GRE. Um, and again, it's not really, I want to say like it's really showing your aptitude and it's showing your understanding of like basic knowledge yeah, more yeah. than it is anything else. The essay really helps. So again, <laughs> I didn't have a GRE or I didn't submit it to some schools. Mm -hmm. My essay was like really showing me. Like it yeah. showed everything I have done until this point, yeah. which has led me to applying to counseling. Uh -huh. And um, that really represented who I am. And then my impact that I did at undergrad. I was very yeah. involved. I got good grades. So like yeah. obviously that hand in hand with your story is what makes your application. So now for let's say for a student who's going to apply for the masters yeah. from Dubai or India or whatever or Pakistan. Sure. Uh, let's just say um, their grades aren't that good, but then they do the GRE or the GMAT and then they get up. They meet the requirements sure. and they have a good score to you know back that up. Yeah. Uh, how important is profile when it comes to this? Like you know the extracurricular things that you learn. Does it really add value as much as it does for undergrad applications or? I would say it does add value, but then the work experience probably adds a little bit more. Okay. Just because that tops it. Okay. I wouldn't say tops it because uh, again, admissions officers you don't really know what they're thinking that yeah, year, right? Yeah. Like one year they could say, oh, the GRE is all I'm looking at, or oh, like okay. you really it's, never know what's up oh, in the back. Oh, it's very subjective. Huh? It's very holistic, but sometimes we don't know what they give preference to. Okay. Because you don't know what person reads your application yeah, that exactly, day, yeah. looks at one thing and says, no, I don't want to take them in, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's really like in their hands. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yes, your involvement always matters because if you didn't seek opportunities, go out of your way to make an impact, and again, doesn't need to be a big impact, but mm -hmm. just make sure you're a part of your community. Yeah. They will see that because they want that kind of person at their school. They want the person who will go and make an impact. Mm -hmm. Whether you're doing a PhD, a, you know, like master's program, MBA, whatever you're doing, they just want you to make an impact. So so yes, the involvement helps, and then the work experience after shows that drive, shows yeah. that you know keenness, curiosity to learn, and then your application obviously will create that story together, like piece it together. 
of course yeah uh can you touch a little little upon uh, internships while studying yeah. and you know work and stuff like that absolutely i would say internships are just so good because while you're studying and yeah. are you saying during undergrad or are you saying uh, masters strictly masters uh internships during that yeah like during your vacation or part time you know so in the us we can only get internships um so jobs on campus like when it comes yeah. to being paid you can only do it on campus oh, when you're okay. an international student there is something called a cpt okay. um and that is kind of like a addition to your visa which mm-hmm. allows you to work outside of campus mm-hmm. and it could be at an internship and the max capacity i believe is 6 months okay. so you could yeah. do that off campus yeah. um masters is pretty long running so even if you are i don't know maybe you have a break over the summer yeah, yeah people are usually getting internships left and right you usually have one summer between your two yeah. years of masters mm-hmm. so they do pick up an internship I've seen a lot of kids get internships in the US just to be able to get your foot in the door over yeah, there. Yeah. Internships are super helpful for you also to get jobs after. Of course, because yeah. if someone is really understanding they absorb you and then it's really good for exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. And they see your work ethic early on. Yeah. Where you don't have to prove yourself after exactly, yeah. you do it during. Yeah. So I think it's very important. Extremely, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I have a couple of friends who are doing masters right now in the US and it's not it's not all uh, happy happy stuff absolutely not <laughs> it's a lot of work like of i mean work. if you compare it to our undergrad cuz we yes. all went to the same uni yes like the amount of fun we had there is they like it's it's a totally different world like you know, oh, yeah, on yourself yeah. you know all by all on your own you got to like it's it's more responsible lady oriented stuff yeah. So I feel like yeah I mean if you really want to go for masters I feel like you know you should be mentally prepared first Absolutely you That's need to want stuff. to do it exactly, I think yeah. in undergrad you could be forced to go and you yeah. could freeze by Exactly but yeah no masters is you no need reason. to have that focus and stuff Absolutely yeah okay. and um Yeah so you want to touch a little upon uh, OPT and STEM and stuff like that Yeah if you do a STEM subject so oh. I had a little bit of issue with this because counseling um psychology is a STEM major at only specific schools okay. and the STEM list changes every year so mm-hmm. if um you know it's by the government officialized as STEM yeah. schools still have to go through the process of converting the program to STEM mm-hmm. my program is only STEM at I think five schools in all of Okay class. so I I think for the viewers I feel like there are a lot of students who don't know what STEM and OPT and all this let's just give them a basic sure. overview and okay. then we can start. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Um so o- STEM OPT just means that if you're doing a STEM subject, you will get 3 years of an extension of your student visa. Yeah. And it's going to allow you to work. In yeah. those 3 years, the company doesn't have to sponsor you. They yeah. can hire you just like a normal individual, yeah. just like an American, but after the 3rd year, they will need to try to sponsor you or you will have to go back to your home country or mm. just out of the US in general. Yeah. If you are not a STEM major, you yeah. will have only one year of an OPT, which yeah. is a one-year extension program where you are able to work, and then they can sponsor you or kick you out. Yeah. And so, it, again, it's like one year versus three years for yeah. them for you to prove yourself to that company. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I would say it is generally a, obviously a little bit easier when you're a STEM student yeah. because of the fact that you get three years to yeah. show them like hey, you've more time in your hands. Yeah. Exactly. But obviously, if your degree is just not STEM anywhere, mm-hmm. you can't do anything about that. Yeah. So I would say those internships would help a lot more. Yeah. Those you know opportunities exactly, yeah. because then you start early on. Uh, for me, psychology generally is not a STEM major. Yeah. And so during undergrad. I only had one year after mm-hmm. um I graduated. This is so important to keep in mind for undergrad and postgrad. Mm-hmm. I learned this in my last year of uni. I had no idea. And so I wish I had at least added maybe a double major that was a STEM major mm-hmm. to give me that 3 year. year I feel like it's program. all uh, you know, it's all about the job market at the, at that point of time yeah. because you know, even though you even though it's an OPT or a STEM yeah. OPT like you still have that Three month window to you know like yeah. find a job Absolutely. and then it, it's it's really like hectic. It's I'm so I'm my friend who applied to like 400 company. Yeah, she was telling me this like yesterday when I met her. She's currently in the US. She's yeah. employed. Nice. Uh, but then um she was telling me the struggle behind it. Like right after uh-huh. she graduated from CMU and then she was like nice. ev- she used to apply to like 40 companies a day. Yeah, and there was so and then like the callbacks are not that great, but then Or you still get it. Back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what. So it's like yeah. the struggle is real. I it mean, is real. It's yeah. so right after graduation you get six ninety days to find a job. Yeah, and then again, if you for let's say. Sadly, let's say after 60 days you get a job, but then yeah. after 6 months you lose the job. Yeah. 30 more days to find. 30 more days you did not the original. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a taking time bomb. It's very <laughs> scary. I did it myself. It's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. And then after I got my experience and I was just like I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You come back home and devise a good home to come back to. I mean, But, yeah. Yeah, I mean the students wanna... have to be like I feel like whoever wants to apply for master they need to like really set 
their mind straight before Absolutely. they go in. You need to know the exactly. goods and the bads of it. Exactly. Yeah. And you also need to know the processes. So again, if exactly, I knew the yeah. OPT, stem OPT stuff a little bit better, I would yeah. probably went in a different direction. Yeah. But just understanding that it's so important to get internships while you're there. Yeah, I mean, I can't stress enough about like how networking is key, right? Absolutely. Like, when you, especially for masters, like I have my friend, friends who are currently doing it there who just graduated and they told me like what they didn't know back then was the importance of networking and I met a couple of like you know you know these uh, uh, university representatives and stuff when I was going for my uh, master's meetings with them yeah. and all they told me was that uh, your faculties and your professors are gonna hate you for this yeah. but they, they they're never gonna tell you this but then for them the coursework is more important yeah. but then you just need to network yeah. as much as you can like Absolutely. be it the alumni or you know your seniors or whoever because yeah. there's no way because for international students you need an insider to like you know prefer you or you know you need someone to like at least like you know help you out with Not for you exactly yeah because like there are students who prefer um, say they prioritize like um, their test dates or you know if they have an exam or an assignment that yeah. submission or deadline mm-hmm. and then there's an alumni meet the night before it but yeah. then you might just end up you know spending time on the dead on the deadline yeah. and stuff on the assignments and you completely skip the alumni yeah. meet and stuff yeah. but this that's just going to create a huge impact for you in yeah. the future yeah. i feel like you should do stuff like that and you know i feel like that adds a lot of value like Absolutely. networking yeah, yeah. be it in dubai or in us as exactly. well exactly i would say network in between before during yeah. and after your undergrad experience so networking i think in my college like just time was so important i obviously did it with my peers yeah. i would try to go to as many other programs as i could yeah. um, even going off campus and networking is important yeah. and i would say your teachers you should network with them because yeah. I know one of the reasons that I got into my grad school program, I hope this is one of the reasons, mm-hmm. is my my teacher wrote me a killer rec letter. Mm-hmm. And at my school with 16,000 people, when I emailed my teacher and said, hey, do you remember me from three years ago? Mm-hmm. I did this in your class, I did this project, and yeah. he's like, of course I remember you. I tell my students now about your project you did, which wow. is so cool. And yeah. it's like one of the teachers that, oh my gosh, he gave us such hard assignments, he was so hard on us, but because he was so challenging, I tried so hard in his class, I ended up with a really good grade, and he remembers me till now, and he wrote me a killer rec letter, which I'm so happy about. So networking with your teachers is very important, because anybody, even if you're a US citizen or an international student, you need someone to vouch for you for your master's application. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, while you're in like an organization working after, while you're at an internship, if your company goes out for like lunch, or if they go out yeah. Event, I would say go and talk to everyone mm-hmm. and not just to people at, the, or your, at your organization. Yeah. Talk to the maybe their friends. Talk to other people who come from other companies. Yeah. Um, go to dinner with your parents' friends who might yeah. be a good network. So again, just take advantage, whether you're here or in America or in mm-hmm. Canada or Spain or wherever you are, just take advantage of your network because mm-hmm. you never know who can set you up with a conversation with someone else. Who exactly, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's very important. Uh, we'll just talk about one last thing yeah, sure. um, life after graduation yeah. like you know like after you complete your master's degree what's next yeah yeah um, like you know the whole uh, balance of academics and personal life yeah. and stuff like that you know I feel like it's such a weird um I guess like mentality for me, I always say, oh, my life is in a buffer period right now until I go to my master's. Yeah. I don't know what happens after master's, I'm exactly. being very honest. Yeah. But I think that's like for master, for many people, master's is the last destination educationally before they do their dream, yeah. right? before they conquer their dreams. And yeah. um, you might not, you might imagine a life after master's that doesn't happen as quick. You might see yourself in a country, but don't have the opportunity to stay there Mm -hmm. something happens and you don't realize it for example for me i was like after undergrad i'm gonna get a great job everything's gonna be fine and then covid hit and that was really hard (laughs) and so unexpected things happen so i i feel like it's important to do the masters with the mentality that like hey reality check things might not go your way but every opportunity matters. Every yeah. single thing you do yeah. from this point forward, like every interaction matters, every class yeah. matters, every internship matters because it leads you to your dream, whatever that dream is. Mm-hmm. You know, that dream could be, I don't know, being like having a family could be a dream of yours and master mm-hmm. somehow maybe helps you get there. Like whatever your dream yeah. is, it's going to come in again. I, I guess I want to emphasize to myself and like everyone looking for a master's program, especially as an international student, Sometimes we do our masters to get our foot in the door over there, yeah. right? To like have this new life, new opportunity. Exactly, yeah. It comes with a lot of struggle. It mm-hmm. comes with a lot of challenges. Yeah. And you could achieve your dream at like 49. Yeah. And not at 25, 30, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. But it's a journey. And I think as long as you enjoy the journey, the destination yeah. will just come to you. At least yeah. I just believe in that. 
So um, yeah, I don't think it'll be easy at all, but um, you're closer to your goal. Yeah. Your goal maybe, which I mean, good. the good days are gonna come surely after the struggles. So. Exactly. Yeah. But I think you'll enjoy some good days during the struggle too. Which of is course. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much for doing this, Alicia. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much for watching guys and if you like this episode do like share and subscribe and also make sure to follow us on our socials. Thank you.